Hey, what's up everybody? Checking out the price of XRP. I've been a big XRP fan since uh, going on, uh, what was it, since 2017, really. Um, and I'm very bullish on it. And the reason why is because of this right here. So if you look at the similar, um, the other bear market, um, or I should say the other Wyckoff accumulation pattern, you can see something very similar. And what I mean by that is a the five phases of the market, which is you have a rise, a crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, 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 blast off. So one more time, you have a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways 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 blast off so there you go and the same thing is happening now we have a rise a crash a retrace reaccumulation sideways 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 what happens next exactly blast off so you know it doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow or the next day but it's gearing up for that uh that blast off phase you know because that's really you know what this video is about is you know the the five phases you know we have five which is we have a rise we have a rise you know you can do it in different color we have a crash we have a crash um we have a retracement we have a retracement and then we have a sideways or sorry reaccumulation going into a sideways reaccumulation so sideways reaccumulation right so you have this down move and then you're basically in this Wyckoff um, accumulation range where you have this down move Wyckoff accumulation move and then what happens next right we have this big pump to the upside what happens next we have this hopefully this big pump to the upside so basically you know that's that's what we're looking at here um, so if, if I were to look at this from an Elliott wave perspective, you could say that this is A, B, C, D, E, go, right? Same thing here, A, B, C, D, and now we're going into E, which we're in right now, and what does that mean? Go. So, um, looking at, you know, the price of XRP, I'm, I'm incredibly bullish, right? I mean... Remember, most of the coins, you know, they went off into a into a bull run and, you know, this was their 2017 top, the bear market, and then pretend this is Bitcoin 20,000. Bitcoin went way, way up to 69,000 uh, 69, and then it started to trail down and now it's, you know, back up here. So, you know, Bitcoin's sitting here. XRP sitting way down here. So, you know, the, the risk to reward is much better for, for XRP. So, um, if you look at, uh, you know, this other move, right, which is a, this whole move would be a wave one. Now we're in wave two. And now we're about to enter wave three. So that's another way um, you can look at it as well. And another way you can say is this is one, two, three, four, five, right? That would be wave one, obviously, A, B, C. So C isn't finished, and we could actually, you know, have a C wave coming down uh, much lower, in, in which case, you know, that would be pretty bearish, right? So, but, but I'm liking this triangle here. So let's focus on the triangle. The triangle, you know, is um, is basically our, our guideline here, and the 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 key is to break above this downward resistance line, just like we broke above the downward resistance line um, right here. So, uh, if you take this extension and put it here, right? I mean, it gets us pretty, pretty high, right? So now that we established all that, let's take a look at what else we can find. So what I really like too is in the 
apex of the triangle, you could see this sideways accumulation. And right here is the same type of thing, sideways accumulation. So it's just a matter of, you know, what, what, what's going to happen, right? Um, and I believe we're going to break to the out, to the upside. And the reason why is because let me show you this fractal first. So I just took this fractal from over here and I'm going to match it up here. Not necessarily from a structure point of view, but looking at it from a time perspective. Uh, for, so from a time perspective, we are overdue for a breakout. And I would like to put it right here in the retracement. And that lines up pretty well. So if you notice, um, you know, this was the top and all... Obviously, this was the top, but it, matching it up with the retracement right here was Bitcoin's top, right, which was 69K. Um, so we had this down move. You could see how it's nicely following um, this up move. You know, see how it's it's not matching up perfectly, but from a time perspective, you can see it, it's getting pretty close. And then we have this up move, which was the, the court ruling. And now we see this long down move. And what I believe is happening at this very moment is we are in the spring phase, just like this purple area down here. I'm going to show you. So this is a Wyckoff accumulation pattern. You can see we had that three wave move to the upside, a down move back to the resistance, and then we have the spring phase. The spring phase is basically a liquidity grab where it comes down, it takes out this low, this low, all these lows to grab the liquidity. It doesn't necessarily have to take out the liquidity. It could be a creek. It could be a different type of schematic. But the point is we're in a spring phase or the creek. And then what happens? We explode to the upside, breaking above the downward resistance line. So is that happening right now? We can see it is. So if I take this and sort of match it up you can kind of see uh where we are and where we are is in my opinion uh this is not financial advice by the way i could be totally dead wrong this thing can go to a million dollars tomorrow or it can go to zero dollars tomorrow who knows what's going to happen this is just speculation based off what i see and what i see is pretty good uh because obviously it looks bullish right uh we're, we're having a breakout right now which we'll discuss but first i just wanted to talk about this spring phase i mean first of all let me take just take a mental screenshot you could see the fractal you could see the breakout you could see it's basically lining up perfectly not to say that it's going to continue to follow because fractals usually break apart but uh from a time perspective we can see this thing really start to accelerate coming up soon so let me take that off the screen and basically what we have here is this resistance area. And it's almost kind of like you can also look at it like an ascending triangle in a way, right? Um, and what we see is massive. You know, we, we have this, obviously, this capitulation. We have this three-way move to the upside. This is also why I believe we're in Wyckoff. We have this move to the downside, and then we have this pretty big move. And you can say, well, what are you talking about? This move was huge. It, it, it basically, well, I look at this move as an anomaly. I look at this move as a news event. I like, I look at it like, like C-19, like it got over exuberant, right? The, the Judge Torres released her, uh, her ruling and XRP is not a security. We all knew that, but the, the world, right, needed confirmation. Once it got that confirmation, it was a blast off. So basically, we went from, what, 46, 47 cents all the way up to, what, 94 cents? And then what happened? Uh, Bitcoin started, you know, trailing down. But the reason why we broke back below, so my original idea was... We were going to break out, right, and then come down and back test and then continue on. But that didn't happen. The reason why is because we did break out and we did come down. And when we got down here, when we got to the resistance right in here, that's when Bitcoin had a massive liquidation. So we, we got, it was a liquidation, uh, 
basically a period or a phase in the market where a lot of sell orders or whatever gets triggered and it causes a influx or a massive liquidation which brought the xrp price back inside the ascending triangle or inside back into the range right more importantly the range so here's the top of the range the price is now back underneath the range and you think oh no that's that's bearish right that's bearish and that's a bad thing but what i think is happening is just a bigger uh wyckoff accumulation pattern for example so i've showed this many times on the channel this is wyckoff accumulation i love this pattern because it basically is a market maker special where the smart money is accumulating a position while the sentiment of the market is often extremely bearish people are believing lower prices are coming but what's happening is whales are accumulating their position so if i put this on the screen you could see it's not perfect at all because of the anomaly that we talked about earlier so what i think is happening and i could be totally wrong by the way uh so you know we have this three-way move to the upside same thing here we have a three-way move to the upside then we have this move back down to support we have this move back down to support then this is where it gets interesting we have this move all the way back up to uh resistance we have this move to resistance but what happened was i thought okay so since we were here now we're going to develop the spring phase so we're going to come all the way down and then go but what happened was we kind of developed this cup and handle pattern the 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 judge released her decision right away and then boom we blasted off so this blast off created an anomaly hey that's my son if you hear him in the background he's playing with his uh his tablet so anyway um if we see a you know a similar move back to the downside i'm thinking that this move right here up to the resistance is just an extended sorry an extended version back to the upside extended version back to the upside so um and now we're developing the spring phase so see so you see how let me put this on so you can see it better so you see how right here we're, we're sort of cupping out and then accelerating to the upside same thing here we're going down and we're starting to cup around and we're most likely hopefully gonna break out now it would have made more sense if it were to come down further maybe down here to cup out but since we were way up here We've fallen quite enough in percentage terms. So in percentage terms, it looks pretty good. So, you know, uh, it looks, it would look, it would have looked better. Obviously, it would have looked better if we come up here and then we come down here for the spring phase and then accelerate. But the judge released her decision. We had this anomaly and then we came down into our creek phase. So regardless of, of all of that, we can have more confirmation, for example, Chainlink. Chainlink had a beautiful Wyckoff accumulation pattern. Uh, maybe even SHIB is creating something to that effect as well. Um, so basically what, what we're seeing here is this down move or this creek, and we want to see it round out and continue to go. And that would create that would create the um you know the in the completed spring right so that's what we want to see so what i like right at this very moment is you see here's resistance 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 and now look since we came back into the range common sense would have said okay that was a false breakout we're going to go back to the bottom of the range but what happened was we stalled out right in here held support and now we're breaking back above the range this is a very bullish sign for xrp and this is why i'm incredibly excited for what the future holds not only the end of the year but also going into the next year and the next few years to come i really believe we can hit major targets above ten dollars at least the 4.236 fibonacci extension which i will talk about in a bit but first of all i want to talk about this right in here so let's take everything off the screen and look pretty close right in here uh, specifically right here 
So what I what I like is I, I've said before is this could be you know some type of ascending triangle and in which case you know we we held support uh, on the belly of the triangle right in here. So that's a, that's one way to look at it. Another way you can look at it is also um, I like to see the cupping action right. So anytime you have a strong range song resistance. And you have this cup, it cups into the resistance, cups into the resistance, right? This is an anomaly, so can't really say it. And then, and if you look even closer, we're cupping into the resistance, cupping into the resistance, and now we're breaking out. So we're getting these series of cups and handles, cups and handles within an ascending triangle, within a Wyckoff accumulation pattern, within the end of the lawsuit, by the way, November 9th is the settlement talk date. So we could see a very big explosive move in XRP or at least a retracement. So the other video I did uh, talking about Algorand. So here's the bottom of the C19 low. Algorand's way down here and it's barely breaking out. You can look at that very bearishly or you can look at that as an opportunity. But like I've said, most coins, you know, they have their, their run, which by the way, this is not a run. This was just a retracement, right? Because we did not, we did not break above the all-time high. You know, most coins, like I've said, we broke out all-time high. We back test, we continue on, and now we're in our bear market up here. But XRP, like I've said before, was in a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, sideways, and we're gonna blast off. And the the biggest reason why it's so incredibly bullish is because. Remember what I talked about the base. The bigger the base, the higher in space. Check out this base. Look at this base right here. This is an amazing base, right? The base was developed and we blasted off. But now I want you to look at this new base. This new base is even bigger than um, the previous one. I mean, look at this. Look how monster... Let me, I got to even increase the time frame because it's, it won't even fit on my chart here. Uh, look how monster move that is, right? And then, you know, so basically what happens in a, in a price, you know, we, we cycle in, we buy, you know, accumulation, we break out and we level up. And then what happens? We do the same thing and then we level up and then the same thing. And this is called, you know, stepping up and, in different phases and different cycles. So, um, I, what I want to do is I want to squeeze this down in here. Now you can see it really tight. You can see just how much um, it's respected, right? So when price broke out, when price broke out, it didn't come all the way down to back test. Instead. What it did is instead of correcting through price all the way back down to the back test zone, instead of correcting through price, it could correct it through time, which is even more bullish. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, we're not going to, you know, XRP's not going to do anything because it didn't break a new all time high. But I say that is a good thing because what happened was XRP took the long way home and the long way home is the more scenic route. The more scenic route, the more memories, the more memories, right? Bad example, but you know what I mean? The, you have more power, right? So all of this accumulation here led to this breakout. All of this accumulation here is going to lead to an even bigger, um, a bigger breakout. So, you know, what next? Well, uh, another reason why I'm very bullish is because XRP has been in the top 10 since the beginning of time. Number one, it's been in the top 10 since the beginning of time. Number two, it's the biggest, I believe, the biggest American company, blockchain crypto company, one of the biggest leaders in the industry. Number three, their secret sauce, which is Ripple. Ripple is basically laying down the pipes, laying down the groundwork for what's to come for more, uh, uh, you know, liquidity providers, cross-border payments, things like that. You know, starting to talk about fundamentals, but, you know, and then continuing down number three number four number five number six a lot of reasons right and another reason is because here's the biggest reason most coins had their 2017 top 
They had their bear market and then they went off new all time high. Most coins, look at V Chain, look at Cardano, look at Matic, look at a lot of different coins. They broke out into all time new highs. So, but XRP did not. So, if, okay, so if XRP didn't break a new all time high, then what does that mean? Well, then that means they should have never, um, they should have been knocked out of the top 10. But they, it wasn't. Look at Cardano. It, it went on a massive cycle. And yes, it did pass up XRP, but look where XRP is now. XRP is below its 2017, 2018 top, and it's still ahead in the game. So that's what I'm saying. XRP had a major lawsuit, and it still held the top 10 title. XRP didn't break into new all-time high, and it still ha held a top 10 title. That is a major achievement. For example, let's say Dogecoin got knocked with a lawsuit. Do you think it would be in the top 10? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not here to knock on Doge. Not, you know, anything's possible. But I'm just giving you an example of how powerful XRP is from a, from a position of strength when you're talking about Ripple, when you're talking about the lawsuit, which, by the way, I don't believe it was a lawsuit. I believe, the conspiracy side of me believes that this lawsuit occurred not because of regulation. Yes, also regulation, but also because basically I look at it as a job interview, right? So the SEC sued Ripple. They had a major issue you know with whatever securities but but in the lawsuit was going on why did the sec pick ripple why did the lawsuit drag on why was ripple targeted well i believe brad garlinghouse and ripple wanted to be targeted because it's the only way to get regulatory clarity if the sec would have never sued ripple then ripple would have never had the clarity it has today which is not a security so it was a blessing in disguise ripple didn't spend what 80 million dollars for nothing they they or more than that right or 100 million or something so ripple the company knew exactly what they were doing and the elite right the, the big dogs of the world are now in confirmation of what ripple really is right because there is no there is no argument right the whole lawsuit was basically a vetting process for what ripple is about to do when it takes the world stage when it takes center stage right and this is all conspiracy right i could be totally wrong i could be totally out of line here but i think this lawsuit was a blessing in disguise it basically positioned ripple so that you know, like a vetting process, you know, you know, the SEC was looking at the financial records, they were looking at Brad, they were basically vetted from top to bottom, top to bottom, right? Just like how they vetted, not to get political, but you know, certain presidents, they, they look into them, they vet the heck out of them. And they're either dirty, or maybe they're clean, or maybe they're who knows, right? But the point is, they've been vetted. And everybody knows the dirt, right? So XRP has been completely vetted from top to bottom. Everybody knows everything about it, which means what? Which means it has confirmation of whatever it's going to do. So if XRP is going to be a neutral bridge asset for all the world's money, then okay. Okay, right? Then they could say, well, no, it can't be a neutral bridge asset for all the world's money. Well, why not? Because it hasn't been vetted. Well, guess what? Yes, it has. The lawsuit was a vetting process so that if that were to ever occur, that can happen. So that I'm just going to go on a just a little tangent there to, to explain my reasoning of the lawsuit. But anyway, the lawsuit happened. It's over with. Ripple beat the heck out of them. You know, it's still not completely, completely over with. I guess they're talking, you know, settlement, November 9th deadline. So... This is actually a perfect position for XRP to take off to the moon once this settlement reaches. And remember, when I say the moon, I mean literally the moon. The reason why is because XRP never broke out. It never had a bull run. Look at Cardano. Look at VeChain. Look at Matic. Look at uh, any coin you like that was in the last bull run, right? Polkadot. Or, I mean, there's so many of them. They had a bull run. They broke out new all-time high. They went into price discovery right here. I'm going to show you right here. This line right here. Most coins. I'm going to put the weekly chart on. 
This is exciting. This is very, very, very exciting. Most coins broke out of that black line. XRP did not break out of that black line. Instead, it was an A, B, C, or, 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 or even better, cr rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, sideways, base, sideways, base. High, the bigger the base, the higher in space. The bigger the base, look how big this base is, right? Same thing down here. Rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, base, sideways base the, the bigger the base the higher in space so everything's lining up perfectly xrp took the long way home which means what basically most coins did this so basically their base was this big but xrp took the long way so now the base is twice as big guys the base is twice as big Bigger than any base out there. Bigger than Dogecoin. Dogecoin is a great example. Dogecoin had a similar fractal of, uh, of XRP, but it broke out here. So basically, the time, the distance from time from here to here. My chart's getting cluttered. Let me take it, everything off the screen. Basically, the, the top from here to here, right? The top from there to there, that's the distance that allowed the bull run but our distance is from here all the way down here and counting which means what which means it's much bigger and when what do they say the bigger the base the higher in space think of the base like a launch pad this is your this is your launch pad right here boom right launch pad boom so you know, and, and we're getting ready to create another launch pad. Who knows how high? We'll get into that in a little bit. But, you know, that that's that's what it looks like to me. And, you know, anytime the price comes up and a big impulse, right? We impulsed up and now we're correcting down. It's not impulsing down. It's correcting down, right? Correcting back up, correcting back down, going sideways, building support, building a base, just like in here. This is the base. This is the same base as right here. Which means what? Which means we're getting ready, in my opinion, not financial advice. We're getting ready to gear up to go and break out. And when I mean break out, I mean break above the all-time high. Right? So basically, XRP is the equivalent as if Bitcoin was at at maybe nine or 10 K, right? So this is Bitcoin at 32 K, 34 K. This is Bitcoin maybe at 10 K. So imagine if Bitcoin was at nine K right now today, wouldn't you buy it? Heck yeah, you would buy it because it went from nine K all the way up to what? 69 K. So XRP can go from what? 55, 58, 60 cents all the way to what? Well, let's find out. I'm going to take everything off the screen. And I'm going to do fib two different Fibonacci extensions. So here's number one. We're going to take it from the top, from the bottom to the top of 2017. And then we're going to drag it all the way down to C19. Now you can use linear scale, scale or log scale. I'm using linear scale just to be more conservative. We'll get into log scale in a moment. But here's all your targets. And basically the big targets for me is... The 1618 and the 1886 and going all the way up here to the 4.236. So between $5 and $13. You say, well, yeah, that's most of the coins. Well, Dogecoin hit in a, ma a massive, uh, um, I don't know the exact target, but it was, if you look at it on log scale, you take a Fibonacci on Dogecoin and you look at it on log scale, I think I did it in one of my videos, that is the equivalent of XRP hitting about $68. Do I think it's gonna hit $68? I don't think so, that's crazy. That's, that would mean the whole market cap of XRP would be bigger than the entire market cap of the entire crypto sphere. So I don't think that, I think we have a good shot at between eight and $13 and my highest target is $27 and I'll show you that now. But just uh, real quick, this is the log scale from the the big of the um, from the top to the bottom. So I would be looking at 
between $31 and $17 if that were to occur. But I, I like to be more conservative. I'm not one of those moon boys. Yeah, can XRP hit 100 bucks? Of course, you know, anything, anything is possible. But, you know, I'm not trying to get people overly excited. And just before I do that, look at this. I want to show you something. Look at this. You have a cup and you have a, another cup. It's cupping up. This is a cup and handle. It's not confirmed yet, but it's getting there. Cup and handle. So what would be the measurement of that cup and handle? Well, well, if I take this from the bottom here, maybe not quite at the bottom. Let's be a little conservative take it all the way to the top and then we'll put the top there and then we'll take this and we'll put that right there that's a monster move that's $32 that's monster move right if I did that on linear scale it would be a lot less but you know um, we could do that another day you know linear scale I guess I could do it right now if I go here regular Okay, and then I take this and I go here up to here, right? And then I take that and I put that right there. That takes us to about maybe three dollars and eighty-eight cents, say four bucks. So four dollars, not bad. Hey, that I'll take four dollars any day of the week, seriously. Okay, so let's go back and we'll do the Fibonacci starting from c19 to the top of this move so basically from this from the from the beginning of the move to the top of the move which is not even a bit a bull market it was it was a fake market right mm -hmm. a lot of coins got great results but we did not uh for xrp land so looking here look at that lines up perfectly look at this 1618 about 27 dollars right here boom so I think that is a great uh, a great target to have. Now, do is that going to happen this cycle? Maybe it might take another cycle. Maybe it might take two more cycles. I don't know. But I believe that we can get up to that $26, $27 area. But a lot of things have to go right in order for that to happen because the market cap is so high. I know XRP, Ripple... You know, there's a whole community out there, and I'm part of the XR community. I love XRP and everything it stands for. You know, and we're talking about the Federal Reserve and talking about all the money. Yes, it's definitely possible, even higher than that. But talking strictly from a technical point of view, $26, $27 is definitely reasonable. Now, that would be the higher target, uh, and that would be that would make sense, right? Because then we would see. We would see, you know, a one, two, three, four, and then have that final wave to the upside. Doesn't that look normal to you? You know, you have boom, 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 and then low, low, and then low, right? It looks, it looks uniformed, right? It looks um, definitely like it would happen, right? Just by eyeballing it, you can see five waves. Okay. So I'll take uh, take all of that off the screen, and we'll do another another target here. And I'm gonna pull the regular Fibonacci from here down to here, and I don't have my full extension. One sec. And here we go. So this would be uh, the linear scale. Uh, regular Fibonacci levels um, and that would be right here which is what between eight and thirteen dollars so that's what most people's looking at eight to thirteen dollars what do you guys think are you gonna sell at eight to thirteen dollars or are you gonna hold for that bigger 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 move I think for me dollar cost averaging is the best way to do it but then also dollar cost averaging out is the best way to do it. But then you can also say, well, I'm not going to sell my XRP at any of these prices. I'm waiting for much bigger prices. And even at those prices, I might not even sell. I might lend out my XRP. I might borrow against my XRP. And that's where you start thinking next level billionaire type of thinking where you're, you're, you're preserving your assets by not necessarily liquidating them, but 
you know, maybe converting them into debt, borrowing against yourself, right? Things like that, or lending them out and, you know, having people use it, right? Or maybe, maybe we're not even allowed to have XRP. Maybe XRP is not for retail. Maybe XRP is only for the banks and they're going to have a buyback. Who knows what's going to happen? I have no clue. We can, all we can do is speculate. But one thing is for sure, to me, this chart looks incredibly bullish. The reason why, and I'll say it one more time, you have a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, 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 blast off. Okay? You have a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, sideways, sideways. What happens next? What happens next? Exactly. Blast off. So, we need to get through the retracement levels first. Let's see what levels those are. So, just looking at this move here, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the retracement from the top of this to the bottom of this here. So, we really need to get above the 702 and the 786. And where is that? That comes in about a dollar 58 to a dollar 30. So let's clear this level right here. And then we can have a shot. And once we break that level, then I'm looking at a 1.618 extension or up to the 1.71 uh, 702, which would be right here. So that is the deal. That is the deal. If we can break above this yellow box which i believe we can sooner or later now remember you can look at this bearishly as well this can be an a b and a c and we can come all the way down to 17 cents before going higher definitely definitely possible is that going to happen i don't know but i'm just giving you the observation if this happens everybody's going to be crying and depressed and you know heartbroken and saying you know we're gonna go lower xrp is dead blah 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 but that would be an amazing uh buying opportunity that could very well happen i'm not saying it's gonna happen but you have to look out for that you know you have an a b c a b c a b and c and that would be w x y and then we go on to the bull run that could happen and this would line up with a stock market crash that would line up with bitcoin crashing or not crash well you know crashing whatever pulling back back testing something of that effect if the stock market melts down that's the problem with crypto markets is they're so tied to the stock market that if in fact we do get a big breakdown in the stock market we could experience an a b and a c so if that happens don't be alarmed don't be alarmed. It's actually going to be a blessing in disguise. Yes, it's going to suck because we're going to have to wait another year, maybe a half a year if we're lucky, but eventually we will take off and be. And the reason why I'm optimistic is, like I said, we have settlement talks November 9th. We have Bitcoin above 30K. We're above the bull market support band. Uh, you know, if you look at like things like Chainlink and Solana, they're doing their Wyckoff patterns. They've broken out. So there's some positive signs that that's not going to happen. But in the event that it does happen, just don't be alarmed. It's normal. But, it, it, you know, it it is what it is. Nobody can control the market. So going back to uh, what I was saying before, if we can get above, right, this this area in here, we break out, right? So I'm looking at, uh, and look at the candle. We're at 57 cents. It's looking really good. If we can get going here and retrace some of this move, maybe come down, back test the breakout area again, come back up, challenge this resistance, crack it, right? Play around and then continue marching to the upside. So that could very well be the case. The last thing I want to... The last thing I want to do is talk about the the Elliott wave triangle. This could be a triangle, in which case every wave is three waves. So let's see if we have three waves. You know, we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now we're on the last wave, wave E. And what do we see? Well, we see two waves so far. So that would be one, 
and now we're going up for two and then we come down for three so is there downside coming it looks if if it's if it's following the elliott wave triangle i think yes we have some downside coming the reason why is because you know if it's an a b c d e and then we blast to the upside every wave needs three so here if you look at wave d one two three now we're in wave e we have one right we're in wave one now we're going into wave two but then we're going to stop probably maybe 68 uh in the 60s maybe 70s and then come down back into maybe uh you know maybe the high 40s if we're lucky and then continue uh marching to the upside so that is my final thought there you know we have one two three one two three one two three one two three one two you know common sense says okay we need one more one two three and then that will finish up wave e just like um down here we finished up wave e and if you notice wave e came pretty pretty low pretty pretty low down there so we have to wait and see what happens um but nonetheless, I like XRP. It's my favorite digital asset on planet Earth. I think it's got the best, the biggest potential out there. And uh, we just have to wait and see what comes of this November 9th deal. If anything, we have to wait for Bitcoin to see if it wants to back test. But I'll tell you right now, if Bitcoin comes down to back test 30K, right, then... Let me take everything off the screen so you can see. If Bitcoin comes down to backtest 30K, then we can see, you know, something like this, where we have this A, B, C, right? Not taking out this low, maybe holding it and then continuing on. And then we're basically to the finish line, guys. We're basically there, you know? And like I said before, if it does this, then yeah, that's going to suck big time. But you know what? It'll be a blessing in disguise because we could pick up more. So what do you think is going to happen? Are we bullish? Are you semi-bullish? Are you bearish? Are you semi-bearish? Are you neutral? What do you think is going to happen? Are we going to go up? Are we going to go down? Are we going to go sideways? Or better yet, let's go to Pluto. I'll meet you on Pluto and we'll have a beer together and uh, we'll celebrate XRP, the greatest digital asset on planet Earth. And with that, thank you guys for watching the video. Again, this is not financial advice. I could be totally dead wrong. XRP can go to a million dollars tomorrow or it can go to zero dollars tomorrow. It really depends, you know, how the how the market makers are feeling that specific day. But at the end of the day, we're all riding this ride together. We're all one big community and we're all on the same boat. So let's ride the boat and let's ride the wave. Let's go. Thank you for watching.